I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At seven minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, your Sears Radio Theater hostess will be Cicely Tyson. Our story will be, I Want Him Dead. Man, that Trenton sure has caused you a lot of problems. I'm going to take care of him today. You still got that gun? What gun? The one you were talking about before. Oh, yeah, but uh, you really don't want it, do you? Where is it? Our story will begin after this message from your local station. Would you hire a person with epilepsy? Before you answer, consider this. Companies that do employ people with epilepsy say these employees often have better job performance, attendance, and safety records than non-handicap workers. Employers also find that when employees are given the facts about epilepsy, they're most understanding. And even if a person has a seizure on the job, co-workers aren't alarmed. They're helpful. Accident insurance rates don't increase when you employ people with epilepsy. These rates aren't based on who's employed, but on the actual accident experience of the company and of similar companies in the area. Most types of epilepsy are controlled by medication. That's why people who've chosen not to reveal their condition can keep it hidden. Why hide? Well, that gets me back to the question. Would you hire a person with epilepsy? Epilepsy. It's not what you think. Get the facts. Contact your local epilepsy chapter or write Epilepsy Foundation of America, Washington, D.C., 20036. This year, let TAP, the airline of Portugal, take you to the TAP happy place. Portugal is unspoiled, and the dollar still goes a long way. Just compare the values in Portugal. They're greater than those in other European countries. TAP has a travel program to make you TAP happy, no matter what your tastes, vacation time, or budget. And you can even include Spain and Morocco in your tour. Call your travel agent or TAP, the airline of Portugal, and... Get TAP happy, get TAP happy. This is Cicely Tyson. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. The park is full, the rush hour traffic is building. But we're not quite ready to begin our play. Not all of the characters are in place. We're waiting for the arrival of Mr. Robert Trenton. He's not the central figure of our play, but without him, it would be impossible for us to get things on the way. But don't be alarmed. It's only that the traffic is slightly heavier than we expected. Mr. Trenton is still a few blocks away. Stopped at a light, perhaps. Or maybe he stayed for one extra drink at Casey's Bar. Whatever the reason for the delay, I'm sure he'll be along presently. The play you're about to hear deals with a thing we can all relate to. Revenge. I know I've often contemplated what I would do were I involved. Ah, oh, Mr. Trenton must be approaching because here comes Billy Green on his bike racing toward the light. And there's Robert Trenton's blue car, weaving through the traffic, swerving from side to side. Billy's almost to the corner now. The light's about to change. Billy's crossing the street. Oh, my God! He hit him! I saw him! Get out of the way! Get him room! Call the police! And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Your hosts, Lorne Green. I'll bring you stories of the Old West and the New. Andy Griffith with a look at the funny side of life. Vincent Price with tales of mystery and suspense. Cicely Tyson with stories about love, hate, and related things. Richard Whitmark. I'll bring you stories of pure adventure. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. 
Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, I Want Him Dead, by David Chomsky. Our stars, Vic Perrin and Peggy Weber. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Sears, 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 where America shops. The suit to own, if you could own only one, is on sale at Sears. The $119 four-piece vested is now $89, a $30 savings. The suit, contrasting slacks, and reversible vest make six different outfits. The four-piece vested suit, it should be the suit you own. On sale for $89 until February 24th in larger Sears men's stores. Style, sense, satisfaction, Sears men's store. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Sarge, this is Officer Murray. Women carrying babies have been going into Sears all day long. All week long, Officer. What? It's baby week at Sears, Murray. A great time for play suits, snap side shirts, play pens, Jenny Lynn baby furniture, blankets, and a whole lot more. Mothers and mothers to be shop Sears all during baby week. Come on, Sarge. How come you know all this? Because my wife and Sarge Jr. are probably at Sears right now. Because Sears has baby buys bundled up. <laughs> frightening words in our language. Accident. As in, there's been an accident. Because what that means is that things will never again be the same. The fabric of the lives involved is forever changed. Because when the event occurs, we react. Action and counteraction. I would never have thought myself capable of it, but let me tell you something. Given the right circumstances, each and every one of us could commit murder. I remember I was at work. It was just a day, Tuesday I think it was, but that doesn't matter. We were putting in the floor of this apartment building. I swear, George, the thing I love so much about this job is watching those chicks walk by. <laughs> Oh, baby, come to Papa. <laughs> you see that? You see that, George? You see her turn around? Oh, come on, Ralph. Let's get back to work. Hand me those nails, will you? Oh, she wants me, Georgie. You can tell by the way she walks away from you. Oh, she's in love with me. You know, if you spend as much time on this building as you do on passing women, we'd have finished the whole thing last Georgie, week. Georgie, 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 I'm just going to have to teach you about the finer things in life. What? Chasing after 16-year-old girls? Uh, they are so sweet. Oh, you're crazy. I got a kid who's half the age of that girl, and besides that, I'm very happy with my wife, Karen. I feel sorry for you. You've forgotten what fun's all about. Uh, Listen, you got to go bowling with us some night. That's fun. Hey, George, the call for you in my office. Uh, thanks, Hank. I wonder who that is. Yeah, it's probably your wife calling to tell you to stop by the store on your way home. You're warped, Ralph, you know that? <laughs> Don't get mushy on company time. <laughs> Anyone who has a child has feared the nightmare call. An accident. What a terrible, horrible word, accident. He's at Mercy General Hospital. Hurry, hurry, come quickly. Call for Dr. McMahon. George! Karen, how is he? What happened? Oh, I'm so glad you're here. What happened? Oh, Billy was hit by a car. Oh, God. Where is he? They're working on him now. What did they say? They wouldn't tell me anything. Excuse me, are you George Green? Yes, yes, I am. I'm Officer Pruitt. This is my partner, Officer Floyd. Uh, 
I know this is a difficult time for both of you, but there are a few things we need. Look, can you tell me what happened? Well, it appears your son was riding his bicycle across the street when he was struck by a car, which apparently didn't stop for the light. Now, we have a driver down at the station, and what we need from you now is your signature on this complaint so the district attorney can file charges. What, where do I stand? Right over here, please. Off the record, it looks like you've got a pretty good case. The driver certainly appeared to me as if he'd been drinking quite heavily. Oh, you ought to keep him in jail till he rots. Someone from the district attorney's office will contact you. Hey, good luck, Mr. Green. Thank you. Uh, are you Mr. and Mrs. Green? Yes. That's right. I'm Dr. Rinaldi. Who is he? Uh, Billy's resting now. We've done everything we could for him, but it's still touch and go. I'm being perfectly frank with you because I believe you should know... He suffered extensive internal injuries. Oh, is he going to be all right? Well, if he makes it through the night, he has a good chance. Can we see him? Yes, but don't stay too long. You can't talk to him, you know. He's unconscious. Oh. But he's not in any pain. He's just down the hall. The last door on your left. Thank you, Doctor. Is this it? Yeah, I think so. Let me get the door. Oh, God! Let's go in. He better be, because if he isn't, <laughs> Billy. Oh, we should leave now. We'll be, we'll be back later, Billy. You, you want anything? Uh, Some coffee? No, I don't think so. Oh, George. <laughs> Hey, where's Cindy? I left her with Annie, Jerry. Good. Excuse me. Uh, the nurse told me that you're the Greens, the parents of the little boy who was in the accident. Yes. My name is Robert Trent, and I wanted to know how he was doing. He's unconscious. Why do you want to know? Well, it was... Uh, the whole thing was an accident. Your boy crossed while the light was still red. It hadn't turned green for him yet, and he fell. Uh, who are you? I was the driver of the car that hit him. I, 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 I wanted to know how he was. Well, the police told me you were in jail. They released me, but I want you to know how sorry I am. Back! Oh, you knocked your head against the wall till you haven't got anything left. He's let go of me. Oh, George, let go of him. You let go my son. Oh, let go Dr. of me. Rinaldi. How could you do it? Hey, uh, uh, hold it, hold it. This is no place for a fist fight. Let go of me, Fangs. Uh, come here, help me pull them apart. He can't. Now stop. What's this all about? He's the one who did it. He hit my son. Take it easy, Mr. Green. Now, sir, you, you better leave. I just want him to know that I'm sorry. I said leave, please. It was an accident. I, I, I'm going to get you, Trenton. Oh, let go of me. George. I said let me go. Mr. Green, calm down. You're not doing anybody any good this way. Not yourself and not your son. Oh, I'm going to get him. Mr. Green, calm down, please. Now, before you leave the hospital, I want you to have this prescription filled. Just give it to the nurse behind the desk. And I think you should also take these, Mrs. Green. I'm not taking any pills. Oh, it's just to help you relax. You feel more comfortable and less anxious. All right. All right. Now, why don't you go home? There isn't anything you can do here. Go home and get some sleep, and if there's any change, we'll call you. Oh, even the slightest... Don't worry, we'll let you know. Do you have our phone number? Yes. Now, please go home and try to get some sleep. <laughs> did what we'd been told to do. We went home. Neither of us could eat, but we fed Cindy, our little girl, and told her there'd been an accident. Nothing serious is how we reassured her. We watched some television without seeing anything, then went to bed. But it was useless. I lay there staring at the ceiling, and all I could think of was Billy in that hospital bed and that, that louse Trenton out free. Accident? No way. George, what's the matter? Oh, I, 
I didn't mean to wake you up. Can't you sleep? No. Why, why don't you take one of those pills the doctor gave you? I already did. Now go back to sleep. Oh, I wasn't sleeping anyway. What time is it? Uh, three o'clock. You want anything to eat? No. No, I, I, I keep seeing Billy's face. So do I. I'm sure he's going to be fine. Isn't he? I can't believe the police let that Trenton go. I thought they said we had a strong case. The district attorney called. He explained that. Don't you remember? I remember. But the cops said he was drunk. Oh, George, he said they made a mistake. It was still his oh, fault. Put your voice down. I'm going to wake Cindy. It was Trenton's fault. Please don't get upset about it anymore. You scare me when you get that way. Try to get some sleep. Hello? Who is it? The hospital? Yes, doctor. What? What's he saying? Well, tell me. Oh, God. Oh, what? God. Let me talk to you. Oh, Ellen. Oh, oh. Thank, thank you, doctor. Oh, oh. Tell me. He's gone. What? Uh, he came to for a little while. And, and what? The doctor said he was conscious for a little while. But then... Oh, my little boy. He's gone. <laughs> I can't sleep. Phone woke me up. It's all right now. You can go back to sleep. Why are you crying, Mom? Oh, I'm not crying. You go back to sleep. When's Billy coming home? Isn't he afraid to be alone? No. Billy's a boy. He's not afraid of anything. He told me. Can I sleep with you and Daddy now? Oh, of course, baby. Um, you sleep next to Mommy. You sleep well, my baby. Mommy and Daddy love you. I'm going to get him. I'll get him. Get Billy? You mean you're going to get Billy tomorrow? No. No, sweetie. Somebody else. <laughs> Can't believe you owe the IRS that much? Well, when things just don't add up, you can count on a Sears desk calculator to help you add up what you don't owe. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide, then read the figures two different ways. 12-digit display or tape printout. There's a two-memory system that helps ease multi-step problems. Plus, its many extras make it a great time saver. Sears two-memory desk calculator now cut $25, just $99.99 through March 10th at most Sears retail stores. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Generations ago, families dined by the warmth of the open hearth. Today, Sears rekindles this spirit with its open hearth dining room furniture. Faithfully rendered early American designs and careful workmanship give it an heirloom quality. The satin glow and warm highlighting of Sears open hearth take 26 steps to achieve. There's no shorter method to bring out the beauty of the wood. And like all good furniture, open hearth is made to last for a long time with sturdy tongue and groove and mortise and tenon construction. Choose from 16 different pieces of open hearth at most Sears retail stores. What would it cost to replace your car's muffler, including insulation? Oh, I'd say about $50. No, wait, $45. Give me around $30. Yes, about $40. The Illuminized Sears Muzzler is only $19.99. That's half of what I guessed. It's hard to believe. On a Cadillac? That's a terrific price. With installation and good. Yes. I should have known it. Sears. The Muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps have needed 99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Darling, I'm a mattress who knows what to wear. Solid color percale sheets from Sears Medley Collection, of course. This gorgeous sheet I'm wearing speaks for itself. The color is called Indian Sand. Isn't that stunning? I wear sheets of royal blue, lemon yellow. Sears has a dazzling selection of up to 24 colors. And the fit? Well, just look. I can't understand why mattresses wear anything but these smooth permapress sheets. Honestly, darling, I wouldn't wear anything else. Sizes from Twin to King in most Sears retail stores and in the catalog. The wheels 
caused that emotion. There's an accident. Now someone must pay. George has been hurt through the injury to his son. And now, he must return the hurt. I went to work the next day. I didn't know what else to do. All I could think about was Billy. And the more I thought about him, the more I knew I wanted the man responsible. I was working alone that day. In fact, I remember Hank, the construction boss, came over to talk to me. Karen had called and told him what had happened to Billy. He told me to go home and take the rest of the week off. But what I needed was to keep working, because this thought continued to fester about Trenton and how it was his fault Billy was dead. When I got home, Karen was in Billy's room. George? Is that you? Yeah. Well, where are you? In the den. Why don't you come in here? Because I'm in the den. Please. All right. I'm coming. Okay. What do you want? I'm glad you came home. What are you doing in Billy's room? Well, I just thought I should sort his things. Why? Because he doesn't need them now. We can call Goodwill or somebody. They'll pick it up. What are you in such a hurry for? Well, I just thought it would help if we did this now. No. Well, we have to do it sometime. But not now. All right. Why are you so angry at me? Where do you get off calling me at work? You didn't have to go in today. They would have understood. That's not for you to decide. You shouldn't have called like that. I just wanted you home with me. Well, I thought if I went to work, if, if I didn't think about it... Why do, you, why do you have to pack up his things now? Why are you in such a hurry to give his clothes away? Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get that guy. I'm going to make him pay. Don't talk like that. <laughs> it can't do any good. It's not just talk. I'm going to make him pay for what he did. Oh, George, don't be like this. <laughs> Nothing's going to bring Billy back. Trenton's going to have to pay for it. Where are you going? To the dead. Ann and Jerry called. I, they're, they're coming by. I don't want to see them. Oh. oh. Oh, my Billy. My little boy. I knew I was taking out my grief and anger on Karen, and I couldn't seem to do anything about it. I was striking out in fury at anything close by. I poured myself a long drink. And I found myself crying. Daddy? What is it, honey? Can I have some ice cream? Yeah. I think that's all right. Daddy, when's Billy coming home? Billy... Billy isn't coming home. Why not? Why don't you get a couple of bowls and put them there on the table? Why isn't Billy coming home? Well, you know, Billy was in a very bad accident and he had to go to the hospital. I know. Well, sometimes people are hurt so bad that they never get better. And when that happens, God comes and takes him to heaven. Well, why can't Billy get better? Because, honey, sometimes you just can't. When Billy was hit by the car, he was very badly hurt. And there wasn't anything anybody could do. Now, sit down. Here's your ice cream. Thank you. Daddy, I want to play with Billy. Honey, you can't. Because he's, he's in heaven now. But he's looking down on us. And any time you want to talk to him, all you have to do is close your eyes, just like when you're saying your prayers to God, and Billy will hear you. Will Billy come back ever? No, sweetheart. He was hurt very badly. And once you go to heaven, you can't come back. But he still loves us. And he... 
We still love him, but we can't see him. Daddy! Daddy, go! Daddy! Mommy! Mommy! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! What's the matter? Oh, George, what started this? Him. Him. I hit the table so hard my right hand was bleeding. I washed it, and then like a sick animal, I took the whiskey bottle with me into the den and shut the door. I sat there drinking. I knew Karen would answer it. Oh, Karen, when I heard... If there's anything either Jerry or I can do, please don't... No, thank you. I appreciate that. Have you made arrangements for the funeral yet? Yes. It's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Oh, it's so terrible. Oh, please don't cry. That's all I've been doing all day. I'm, I'm sorry. I just keep thinking, what if... What if it had been my little Jerry? Oh, what a terrible thing to say. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm sure I, I'd have thought... It... You know, I've been going through some of old things. If there's anything there you can use... Oh, oh, I... I couldn't. Listen, Karen, I don't know what I said, but whatever it was, George kicked me out. Oh, he didn't mean it. He's been very upset. Oh, I know. I know. You don't have to apologize, but... Well, look, I hope you won't be offended by this, but maybe he should talk to someone. You know, get some help. He was really... Wild. You think I'm nuts, huh? Now, George, I didn't mean that... I know what you meant, and I don't have to take that from you. George... He just thinks you should talk to someone. I don't have to talk to anybody, and I don't have to talk to him. So why don't you get out of my house? George... I said get out, both of you. Karen, maybe we'd better go. All right. I'll, I'll call you later. Goodbye. Good night, Karen. Goodbye. Take it easy, George. Just Jerry. get out, now. All right. Good night, Karen. Good night, Jerry. Now! Goodbye, George. Who does he think he is? You're drunk. What of it? You got no right telling me I'm crazy. You have no right throwing him out like that. I've got every right. It's my house, too. Anne is my friend. They came here to be with us, and you behave like an animal. <laughs> Karen, I didn't mean... I... I think Jerry is right. You need some kind of professional help. I didn't know what to do. I've never felt so alone. I had to talk to somebody. I couldn't speak to Karen, and Jerry wouldn't understand. I decided to call Ralph. George. Hey, George. Good to hear from you. Uh, listen, I uh, heard about your kid. I'm real sorry. Thank you. What can I do for you? I just wanted to talk. Well, go ahead. I'm free. Spare your guts. What's on your mind? Well, I don't know how to put it. You can tell me. It's this guy, Robert Trenton. He's a murderer, and the police let him go. They just let him go, and it's not fair. Well, if it's really bugging you that much, uh, I'd take care of it myself. That's what I'd do if I were you. That's all I've been thinking about, Ralph. Why don't you find out where this guy lives, and the two of us will pay him a little visit. You know what I mean? Teach him a lesson. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Just show him he can't get away with it. That That's good, Ralph. Thank you. Hey, what are friends for? Listen, I gotta go now. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go over where he lives and we'll teach him a lesson. We'll make him pay for it. We'll fix him real good. I want him dead. <laughs> Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Well, it 
all started when my son Willard said, Dad, you just don't understand how it is to be in my shoes. And so I said, Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll do what you do for a day, and I'll see how it is. Well, first it was great. I slept in till 20 minutes, too, like Willard does. But then after school, Willard told me... Um, the garage is dirty. Would you mind cleaning it up? And I told him... Um, I'll see about it later, Willard. And he said... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, you'll see about it all now. All right, all right. So I did. But I wasn't very happy about it. Well, after supper, I thought I might catch a little TV. But then Willard reminded me... Um, don't you have homework to do? Two things I know for sure. One is, I'm going to work harder to understand how Willard feels. And two... I gotta get Willard's shoes off. My feet are killing me. Listening, caring, and sharing. That's what understanding is all about. From the Mormons, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm lost and lonely, scared and sad. Trembling at the thought of making you mad. My love is yours, but at times you're so cold. If life's like this, take me before I grow. This song about child abuse was written by a man now serving time in a state prison. It is estimated that there are at least one million cases of child abuse in America each year. Child abusers and their children can both be helped. Find out how. Write Prevent Child Abuse, Box 2866, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. Please stop the hurt. I've suffered since my birth. Message of the Ad Council and the National Committee for Prevention of Child Abuse. Cicely Tyson again. And here's the concluding act of I Want Him Dead. We had the funeral and somehow I managed to get through the rest of the week. But all I could think about was getting Trenton. I found out where he lived. I drove past his house continually. I watched his every move. I memorized his schedule. I knew who his friends were and when they were likely to come by. I became obsessed with finding out everything I possibly could about him to use in plotting my revenge. Finally, one night after dinner, I couldn't stand thinking about it any longer. It was time to act. I called Ralph. Yeah, hello. Ralph? Yeah. It's George. Hey, George. What's up? I... Got his address and everything. Oh, good. Thought maybe you'd change your mind. When you want to go over there? Uh, let's see. Tonight's not good, and I got bowling tomorrow night. Look, somebody's coming. I'll talk to you at work tomorrow. Who are you talking to? What were you sneaking up on me for? Wasn't sneaking up on you. Who was on the phone? It was Ralph. Ralph? Who's Ralph? Somebody I met on this job. Never heard of him before. So what? Why are you so touchy about everything? I am not touchy. What were you talking about with Ralph? Nothing. Don't lie to me. Nothing. What business is it of yours anyway? I care about you. You're planning to go after that man, aren't you? Maybe I am. George, getting yourself thrown in jail isn't going to help anything. Nobody's going to put anybody in jail. Well, what are you going to do? Teach him a lesson. And you don't think he'll call the police the minute you show up? You can't just go over there. Will you leave me alone? George! <laughs> leave me alone. It doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to drink all day long. Leave me alone! I sat there half the night drinking, letting my fury grow. I don't know when I fell asleep. I woke up at first light, still sitting in the chair. I didn't eat breakfast. I just sprinkled some water on my face and went to work. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Morning, Ralph. Well, what happened last night? Oh, my wife came in. I didn't want her to hear what we were talking about. Yeah, you're right, Jed. So, um, like, when do you want to go over and crack a couple of bones? Well, we got to come up with some kind of plan first. I don't want him to be able to say who did it. <laughs> want me to bring my gun? No. Hey, come on, you guys. Get to work. Yes, sir. 
Hey, listen, you want to come bowling with us tonight? We can talk a little, you know, smash a few pins, take your mind off your troubles. I can't, I can't. Some neighbors are coming over. Okay, we'll make it another night. Yeah. I said get to work, and I don't mean sometime later today. Hey, we better get working. <laughs> I was in a stage by then where I don't even remember working. I got cleaned up when I got home because Karen said Ham and Jerry were coming over. Turned out Jerry wanted to talk to me, give me advice, whatever. George, whatever you do is not going to bring Billy back. He's dead. You have to see that. You think I don't? I know he's dead. Then tell me, what's the point of doing something to this Trenton? Well, it'll be justice. No, it won't. Justice is in the courts. It's justice to me, and I'll feel better. But whatever you do, they'll put you in jail. Nobody's going to put me in jail. Why not? They just won't. Well, then, what about the rest of your family? Can't you see what you're putting them through? It's not me. It's Trenton. It was his fault. He's the one that's going to pay. All right, George. We're not getting anywhere. Will you at least think about what I said? <laughs> I know they were being friends, trying to help us, but I couldn't control myself. I was obsessed with this need to have revenge. Karen was very quiet, sort of hesitant, until we were getting ready for bed. Did you talk to Jerry? Well, he talked to me, if that's what you mean. I was hoping you'd feel better about things if you had a chance to talk to someone. I'll feel better when Trenton's paid for what he did. You've got to stop thinking that, talking that way. Well, that's how I feel. You know, we haven't spoken to each other since the accident. Not really. All you talk about is that man and punishing him. Instead, you're punishing us. I want justice. George, if you don't stop it, I'm going to take Cindy and leave. No. Yes. I can't stand it anymore, and it's hurting Cindy. No, you can't go. Then do something. Get help. See a psychiatrist. What for? I'm not crazy. If you'll talk to a psychiatrist, I won't leave. Here, I've made an appointment for you. Tomorrow at 5.30. You already called? I've written it down. Here's the address. Now, please go. Please. Okay. I'll see your psychiatrist. When I got up the next day, I had no intention of seeing any doctor. I knew what had to be done, and I was that close to doing it. After work, I stopped in a bar and had a few beers before I went home. I figured I'd tell Karen I'd seen her psychiatrist after work and that now everything would be fine. I'm home. Why are you so late? Well... It was your idea that I go see that doctor. Then why didn't you? What do you mean? I called there, George. He said you never showed up. You were checking up on me again, weren't you? You had no right. Why didn't you go? What are these suitcases doing here? I'm leaving, and I'm taking Cindy with me. I told her we were going to see Grandma. Well, Karen, you can't go. We had an agreement. All right. All right, I'll see the doctor tomorrow. Call and make another appointment. Nothing wrong with me, but you can make another appointment. No, because you won't keep it. Don't you understand? After I get this guy Trenton, everything will be all right. Don't you see that I, I want to get him for you just as much as for myself? I love my son. I want to get him for Billy. He is gone now, and you can't change that. There isn't anything you or anybody can do to change that. You couldn't have loved him as much as I did. Cindy, it's time to go. And you're really helping me by leaving. When you work this out, we'll come back. Cindy, are you ready? Yes, Mommy. Goodbye, George. I'll expect to hear from you. She was gone. And that was Trenton's fault. Then when I went to work the next day, there was a little surprise waiting for me. I was put on vacation. I couldn't blame them. I really wasn't doing much work. At least they didn't fire me. Not, not officially, anyway. 
But that was Trenton's fault, too. And that did it. I went over to see Ralph. He fired you? Well, put me on vacation. It's the same thing. Oh, no. Said I wasn't working hard enough. Well, he was nice about it and all. I, I mean, he's right and everything. Man, that Trenton sure has caused you a lot of problems. I'm going to take care of him today. You still got that gun? What gun? The one you were talking about before. Oh, yeah, but uh, you really don't want it, do you? Where is it? It's in my car, but you're not really going to go over there and do anything, are you? No. No, I just want to scare him. Yeah. It's in the glove compartment of my pickup. Thanks, Ralph. Uh, call me tonight, okay? George? Call me? I took Ralph's gun and drove directly to Trenton's house. I knew what time he'd be home, so I waited. When he arrived, I watched him go into his house, and then after a minute, I calmly walked to the front door. I could feel the bulge of Ralph's gun under my jacket. I took a deep breath and knocked. Yes, can I help you? Remember me? You're the... You're the father of the little boy in the accident. I came to apologize for the way I acted before. May I come in? Yes, yes, certainly. Thank you. Uh, why, why don't we go into the living room? <clears throat> I can't tell you how sorry I am about your son. So am I. Uh, uh, sit down, please. I prefer to stand. I hope you don't mind if I sit down. I couldn't care less. Why did you come here? I told you. I know better than that. I, I can see it in your eyes. What? What do you see? Hate. You don't see half of it. I see a very confused man who is very angry. And why shouldn't I be? Because of you, my son is dead. My wife and daughter have left me and I've lost my job. Why shouldn't I be angry? Mr. Green, it was an accident. It was your fault. You were drunk. No, I wasn't. The police said you were. Mr. Green, please sit down. There's something you should know. Please. All right. But it won't make any difference. Why do you think the police let me go? I don't know. Because I'm sick, Mr. Green. Very sick. I have an inoperable brain tumor. The doctors have told me I have only three months to live. What the police thought was drunkenness was illness. Just before the accident, I had some kind of mild seizure, but I had recovered before it happened. What were you doing driving with something like that? The doctors said it was all right to drive. But didn't you have any signs? Didn't you think something like that might happen? No. Believe me, I never would have been driving if I thought anything like that could happen. It was still your fault, Trenton. Mr. Green, it was an accident. It was no one's fault. Not mine and not your son. It was your fault. Everything that happened. Mr. Green, please. Put down that gun. You'd be getting yourself into a lot of trouble for no reason at all. It's not necessary, don't you see? I'm already a dead man. You killed my son. There was nothing I could do. He fell off his bicycle when he rode into the street. He fell directly in front of my car. It was an accident. There was nothing I could do. Why don't you put the gun away? There's no need for it. That's better. A few... A few minutes ago... I wanted you dead. And soon I will be. You look like you could use a drink. I think I could. No, uh... I'd rather have some coffee if it wouldn't be too much trouble. No trouble at all. Why don't you come with me to the kitchen? 
I'll make some. Hello? Karen? George, where are you? I've been so worried. It's all right. Everything's all right. I'm coming home, Karen. We got a lot to talk about. I'm coming home. Cut it and love it during Sears Home Center Sale. We've cut $20 off the price of Sears Best Craftsman Motorized Miter Box. It's a cut above manual with a motor that develops one and a half horsepower to let you rough or finish cut most types of stock. You'll get quick, precise cross cuts, miters and bevels with a single downstroke. Sears Motorized Miter Box. Cut $20. Now only $179.99. Sears Home Center Sale till February 24th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most Sears retail stores. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. Sears Budget Shop has a vested interest in value. Vested dresses and vested skirt and pants sets in sizes 8 to 18. Styled just right for spring. Their romantic flounce dresses topped by vests. Tunic pantsuits coupled with vests. Also the tunic and skirt smartly finished with a vest. The vest, the season's fashion basic. Lots of exciting print and solid color combinations. So you can be choosy. Invest in fashion. Invest in value. Vested dresses and vested skirt and pants sets in the Budget Shop at most larger Sears retail stores. From Sears, passion that fends off the storm, salutes the sunshine. Step out, military flair. These double-breasted trench coats get down to details. Choose olive green or khaki tan decorum polyester and cotton, sizes 8 to 18. Another fashion winner, the new quilt trim sheared shoulder coat with self-belt. In chino beige polyester and cotton, sizes 6 to 16. Both coats come with a nylon lining. Fashion that fends off the storm, salutes the sunshine. In the coat department at most larger Sears retail stores. You've been listening to Sears Radio Theater Talk to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company Sears, where America shops I Want Him Dead was written by David Chomsky Produced and directed by Fletcher Markle Your hostess was Cicely Tyson our stars were Vic Perrin and Peggy Weber. Also heard were Noel North, Barney Phillips, Byron Kane, Shepard Menken, Alice Heath, and Jack Carroll. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Sir, I'm here at JFK Airport to ask about foreign vacations. I can't talk about it. It was terrible. Oh, gosh, you have a great tan, sir. Yeah. And your wife there, she looks spectacular. <laughs> you must have had a great time. I must have. It was your fault, Harry. You had to try to bring back the bird eggs. It was so embarrassing. And what was the high point of your foreign vacation, ma'am? Well, it wasn't when the agricultural inspector confiscated a carton of steaks Harry blew all that money on. Uh, that must have been very exciting. He took away my teddy bear stuffed with straw. Oh, <laughs> sir, why would he do that? I don't know. No. I know, because certain foods, plants, and animal products are restricted or prohibited. Oh? What, well, he could bring a disease or pest to the U.S. that could cause an epidemic. Gosh. Even just one could. Myrtle, did you say pest? Uh -huh. He confiscated a pest? Yes. Then why didn't he confiscate you, Myrtle? Even one can hurt, right for traveler's tips. A free booklet that tells you the law. Write traveler's tips, USDA, Washington, 20250. I'll bet my teddy misses me. Tell them plans are out anyway. Yeah, we'll back order his silly trousers. We get the peace goods on the, on the 4th, we finish them on the 15th, we ship them on the 15th. That means he receives shipping on the 18th. 
Oh, no, 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 no. I, that's, a, that's a Sunday. Uh, uh, the 19th, the absolute latest. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry. Thank you. Oh, no, no, nobody, no, nobody but nobody showing cubs this year. They're a waste of good polyester, which, by the way, no one's buying either this year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, baby. Ciao. Boy, the, the things people expect from you these days. Here's that invoice, Mr. Stanley. Are, are you feeling all right? You're sweating. Uh, uh it's, it's heartburn or something. Uh, give me a salsa. I, I, I feel nauseous. It could be heartburn. It could be heart attack. Know the symptoms of heart attack. Contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Tomorrow, the Sears Radio Theater is a story of adventure with Richard Whitmark as your host. So let's listen. What's that? Take your seats. What is it? I don't know, but fasten your seatbelts. The ship is quivering. It, it may be an earthquake. If this ship falls over on its side, we've had it. Hey! Rain! The sky was clear as we...